Hello, my dear listeners, followers of Daniel's Blood Love. Uh, um, this uh, this is Dr. Daniel Kim, a uh, hematology specialist, a professor measuring the hematology disease. Today, I will introduce how to choose the best uh, hematopoietic stem cell donor from our available donor option for allergy cell transplantation. For the allergy cell transplantation, we need a donor who can transfer or donate their stem cell from the peripheral or bone marrow. So we can collect any kind of a donor registry or we can find the available donor from the sibling of the patient. And we can uh, uh, select one of the best available hematopoietic stem cell donor from the available option. Then if we have only one choice, there is no other way to choose the another donor. We have no uh, some some carefulness. Uh, we we don't need to pay attention to how to choose the best available donor. But if we have a lot of donor available options for the allergic stem cell transplantation we needed to find the best available donor to achieve the best treatment outcome for our allergy cell transplantation. Now let's start how to choose the best available donor for the allergy stem cell transplantation. We can check the various type of uh, some criteria to select the best available hematopoietic stem cell donor. The most important thing to choose the best donor for allergy stem cell transplantation is the matchness of HRA typing. For the HRA typing, we usually check 10 locus loci from the HRA molecule, molecule HRA A, B, C, PL, and DQ. Sometimes some experts uh, insist to consider the DP for the available the best uh, outcome to for the allergy stem cell transplantation, and some experts insist that we don't need to pay attention to DQ. We needed to just consider A, B, C, and D all. But uh, I think the our best available option to choose the HRA matinees is to check the serotype and uh, molecular type of HRA sequencing for A, B, C, D, L, and D, Q. So these uh, HRA data uh, usually exist in pair because we, our chromosome has always uh, can be uh, moved in a pair way. We have 46 chromosomes and 23 pairs, including the sex chromosome. So, we have to check A, B, C, D, R, D, Q in a reciprocal setting. So all the 10 loci loci should be considered to check the HRA matchness. If the HRA sequencing is always matched between the, uh, the 10 loci is always matches, matches between the donor and the recipient, the patient, we call this relation as pool matched. But sometimes one of the pair may be different between the donor and the patient. And in this situation, we can call this situation, the relationship as partially mismatched. So partially mismatched the situation can have a various situation such as one locus mismatched, two loci mismatch or three loci mismatches. Basically, in order to perform the best available allergen cell transplantation, the just one locus mismatch is usually allowed and permitted if the loci, loci of the different HRA sequencing increase are more than two, three, their overall survival and the outcome, including the allergen cell grafting, grafting rate, the failure rate, the graft versus leukemia versus graft host disease instance is very worsen as 
the loci of the difference atrial in sequencing number increase. So usually, we always favor to use full matched donor rather than the partially mismatched donor. The second thing is the relationship between the donor and the patient. If the donor and patient relationship is the sibling, in other words, they, if they are the offspring from the one biological parent, identical parent, we call this situation the relationship as a sibling. And usually the sibling pull matches the massive sibling donor is always preferable to other type of donor for the outer stem cell transplantation. But nowadays the, the number of children is now decreasing for the some some married uh, marriage uh, uh, pairs uh, some um, so any kind of uh, uh, so so the number of children is now decreasing so we cannot find the uh, appropriate sibling donor for the patient so in that situation we need to find the unrelated donor from the donor registry but uh, in previous uh, decades the uh, outcome of uh, allergen cell trans 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 transplantation from the unrelated donor always was inferior to those of the allergen cell trans trans transplantation from the sibling donor, max the sibling donor. But in our days, the technique for the allergen stem cell transplantation, the donor availability for the conditioning has been increased and improved and the overall outcome of the allergen stem cell transplantation from the matched the sibling donor and the matched the unrelated donors is almost the same, the equal count. So we usually recommend to use this matched sibling donor for the first option, but in case that if we don't have available matched sibling donors, we can use the unrelated donor for the allergen transplantation in a very accepted situation. For example, the allergen stem cell plant, uh, transplantation for aplastic anemia always prefer to use the match the sibling donor because the allergen stem cell transplantation for the uh, 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 aplastic anemia doesn't need to get the graft versus leukemia effect and the the same outcome from the using the match the sibling donor and the match the unrelated donors can be explained that in match the sibling donor the graft versus leukemia impact also slightly decreased than when compared with the unrelated donor allergen stem cell transplantation but the GBHD instance and also the um, the engraftment failure rate also is lower than that of the unrelated donor transplantation. In in on the contrary, the outcome for the unrelated donors can compensate the the shortening of not using the match the sibling donor because when we use the unrelated donor for the allergen stem cell transplantation, the GBA HD instance is also increased and the engraft failure rate also increased, but the graft versus leukemia host, uh, leukemia effect also increased. So the overall outcome is always almost the same in nowadays, but for the aplastic anemia, we don't need the graft versus leukemia effect. So uh, for the aplastic anemia, the best available option is to decrease the uh, engraft with uh, the failure rate and the GPHD instance. So in this specific disease, the match the sibling donor is always preferable to the unrelated donor. When when we can not find the unrelated match the donor, uh, we can consider the third party donor and in Nowadays, the use of haploidentical familiar donors availability is also increasing because all the patients have their sibling who, we, who have the haploidentical 
uh, HRE typing and for the elderly patient they will have their offspring and the young patient they will have their parents so they the dual availability is always available and the, the outcome of a haploid and familiar uh, donor transplantation is nowadays increasing because we have very good uh, treatment option including the PTCY post transplant cytosine to decrease the GBHD instance and uh, thymocyte globin to decrease the GBHD instance. So using this kind of drugs, we can uh, decrease the failure rate and the GBHD instance, which can, uh, which was very important the complication of hoplite and transplantation previously. And when we consider the sex by the biological gender, we usually prefer the male donors. It's not a habit, it's just a um, scientific data because we can get much more uh, stem cells from the peripheral uh, blood when we use the male donor when compared with the female donor. And the female donor usually cannot tolerate this heavy cause of the stem cell collection, including the GCF, uh, uh, the administration and the stem cell collection using the peripheral blood. But it's not a typical uh, uh, principle. Uh, so in case that we cannot find that, find the available male donor, we can always use the female donor as an alternative option. So this uh, discrepancy of the outcome between the male and the female donor is almost the same, but when we can choose one of the donor from the male and the female matched donor, we usually prefer to use the male donor instead of the female donor. It is a very important factor to consider and uh, choose the uh, hematopoietic stem cell donor. If the patient, no, no, if the donor age increase, the stem cell collection rate also decrease. So when we consider the available HRA matched donors, the most important thing is that the donor is a young, healthy donor. So when we have a 25 year old female and 45 or 55 um, HRA matched male, I will choose the female donor because the female donor can donate much more hematopoietic stem cell when compared with the elderly. It's not elderly, but but in biology career, the 24, five year old female is much younger than 45 or 55 year old male donors. So in this case, I prefer to use 25 year old female. It's just an example how to choose the best available donor for dialysis stem cell transplantation. There is no standard, no uh, correct answer to cho choose the best available donor for allergic stem cell transplantation. For the weight of the donor, usually the vein, the thin donor, it's more preferable because the stem cell collection rate is uh, much more than the collection rate from the heavy, thick, fatty donor. It's related with the fatty volume. If the fatty donors is uh, correct, uh, correct uh, chosen by the hematopoietic stem cell donor, the um, better status will not be expected than the body weight. Usually we can expect the best, the expected um, stem cell collection rate using the donor body weight and we can calculate the most uh, available stem cell from the donor. But in case that the donor is very heavy or fatty, the expected stem cell usually decrease when we expect when we when compared with the expectedness of the donor stem cell availability 
Blood type is not a serious one because uh, after allogen stem cell transplantation, the patient's blood type will be changed into the donor blood type if the patient has a uh, Rh positive and the patient will receive the B Rh negative from the, the donor and the blood type of the patient will be changed with uh, to the B Rh negative. But if the, all the other conditions are same, I'd like to choose the, the same uh, blood type donor if the patient has uh, blood type A Rh positive, I will try to choose the same blood type A Rh positive because when we choose the Rh uh, uh, and the ABO type identical donor, the chance of red cell engraftment failure will decrease and the yeah and when you consider the blood type uh, as the second choice uh, option, uh, the, we, we need to consider the uh, availability of donor blood cell product because the A type followed by B and uh, followed by O followed by B followed by AB are available more frequently for the blood through product. So, when the patient will receive uh, needed to the blood product during the allergen stem cell transplantation or after the allergen stem cell transplantation, the uh, availability of the blood product is very important. So I will choose, I will consider the blood type as a last option, last, last option to, to be considered for the choosing allergen stem cell transplantation tool. Okay, um, this is very um, complicated and very uh, um, very uh, uncomfortable information for the the layman, non-medical personnel. But for the hematopoietic stem cell donor specialist, we needed to choose the best available donor for the available option. So I will focus on this kind of criteria. The most important thing is the matchiness of HRA and the relationship between the donor and the patient. And when we choose one, uh, one uh, donor, hematopoiesis steps are donor from the many available donor options, we can check the sex, the age of the donor, and the weight, and the blood type. The most important thing is the HRA maxness and the relationship for the successful allergen stem cell transplantation. Thank you for listening to my information and I'd like to hope that all the patients who suffer from the blood cell disease and their parents and their family will be happy and healthy. Thank you for your listening.